Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world, I am Jay Campbell. And of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual stream yard studio with my good friend, from halfway across the world, in where are you in Germany right now specifically? Tübingen. It's near Stuttgart in the south. Near Stuttgart. Uh, Dr. Dome, my good friend, Wolfpack Forever Nischwitz, who is the world's leading bio-identical doctor. And you guys are going to understand what that means uh, of dentistry, I should say. You guys are going to understand what that means by the end of the show. But, bro, it's, it's an honor I got to let everybody know him and I literally just talked for 90 minutes, uh, you know, personally what I wanted to catch up because we just the last time we saw each other, which is when we first met, uh, was in August in Florida. And uh, we just had an amazing conversation. So, bro, it's been a long time. I know I've canceled on you like two times to finally get you on the podcast. But, man, thank you for coming today. How are you, man? I'm very good. Thank you for having me, Jay. It's amazing. And we literally talk, just talked 90 minutes straight. We literally just talked 90 minutes straight. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're really good friends, guys. Um, so, you know, we obviously just reconverse or reconvene. He actually was sick a little while ago. He had one of the variants, I think, of whatever the hell they're dropping on the planet. And so we were connecting with that. And then we were talking about Hollywood and all sorts of other shit. But uh, let me give you guys his bio real quick. Again, he's literally like the world-renowned specialist in biological dentistry. He trains people. I mean, there's a lot of people now you know, from social media that knows who he is. I've actually had friends that have gone over there and worked with him. Um, but again, holistic odontology, ceramic implants. He's the vice president of the ISMI, which is the International Society for Metal-Free Implementology. And again, he's like the world's leading expert when it comes to like telling you that all of the mercury fillings and metal and amalgam and all of this other bullshit that almost every single one of us has in our mouths is literally uh, calcifying our pineal gland and doing all sorts of other shit to us. So I mean, like he's a perfect guy to be on the Jay Campbell podcast. So again, dude, it's an honor to have here, an honor to have you here. But before we jump into the point, you know, I've been asking my people, and, and again, for the record, today is March thirtieth, Thursday. Fuck, already two thousand twenty-three. We're almost in April. Um, you know, I'm asking my guests, like, what are their thoughts? Like, where are we going as a species? You know, I like to kind of ask with everything that's happened in the scamdemic in the last three years, um, are you a buyer or a seller of the planet right now from a standpoint of like, are we moving into the golden age or are we moving away from a golden age? With what you just told me, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, my brain is like, Jay knows more than me, let's say it this way. So I'm a bit confused right now, let's say it this way. I always am an op I'm a positive thinker, so I always hope for the best. And um, yeah, that's how my brain is wired. But with all these thing things going on, actually, you never know. And maybe it's good to be better be paranoid than naive, right? 100%. 100%. Well, look, you're a very intelligent guy. And, you know, before we get into this podcast, I'll just tell the audience that you are the world's leading expert on removing toxic shit from your mouth. And most people have no idea how toxic laden their mouth is from, again, mercury. And I told you this when we met. Uh, I did this game last year with my daughters before we moved them to Florida you know, I interviewed a bunch of dentists where we lived in Marietta, California, which is, you know, very high cultured, sophisticated place, you know, North San Diego, um, you know, wine country. And I interviewed six different dentists, bro. And I, you know, wanted their opinion on fluoride, mouthwash and fluoride treatment and all this stuff. And bro, 
Not a single one of these people, and some of them were extremely accomplished according to their you know, pedigree and their education and, of course, their social media reputation online. Not a single person t- told me that there was anything wrong with using fluoride. Dude, I, 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 I had a, I mean, I literally about had a heart attack. I mean, I'm looking at these guys like, where do you learn this, right? And the truth is, is you know better than anybody because you went through all this shit. It's not, they're not told the truth in school. They have no idea about fluoride, bro. No, they definitely don't have any idea. And this is what you, yeah, you, that's how you trained in university. And for most dentists, unfortunately, conventional dentists, the university is like, the end of everything for me, it was the entrance card to be able to invent my own things because right during, I never believed what I was learning in university. I was always questioning. Yeah. I, didn't, yeah. I didn't really understand, understood that nobody else was doing it. I was always asking, why am I learning this? Not in a case of like, I, oh, I have to study for an exam. I was like, who invented it? It doesn't make sense. Right. I was missing something till the end. And I finally realized after graduating that it was missing healing or helping people really instead of just repairing them because what doctors really should do is helping people getting actually healthy. This is not what you really learn. But there's no money. Well, of course, but there's no money, right? Again, it's back to Chris Rock. It's like the money is in the medicine, bro, not in the cure. And (laughs) and that's exactly right. Dentists, allopathic doctors, bro, everything, financial industry, the food industry, Everything is about band-aiding and never giving healing solutions. It's about you know treating the symptoms with meds that are expensive, or you know treating uh, obesity with boxed food. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but but the truth is, to back to what you just said, bro, everything is an illusion. Like you figured it out, just like I did. You know, I tell people I ran out of Catholic Church when I was six. Bro, I'm stressed out. I'm stressed out because tomorrow I have to go into a Catholic church for my mom's wet funeral. Like I have to be in that, right? And it's like I was telling my wife, I'm like, we got to put like a grid of protection around this. I don't want to go into any of that. But that you knew, you you had a sense as you went through the school that you were literally being taught bullshit. Your higher self knew that you were literally being in an inversion. And most people, bro, don't have that sense. You know, call it. I call it super conscious wisdom. You know, you could call it your intuition. That's the, kind of the average normie name for it. But it's really the guidance of divinity, which is your higher self, which you were very much in touch with at a young age. And so you were able to question this. But bro, most people, they're just rule following order takers. How many people that go to med school are going to question the teacher like you did? You know what? You know, it's funny. I, me and you are so much alike. When I would play sports in grade school and high school, my coaches hated me because I would always ask the same question that you asked. I'd always be like, but why? I don't understand. Like, explain to me why we should do it this way. Like, I could come up with a better solution, you know. And one of my coaches, who I'm still friends with to this day, the guy's 78 years old. His name's Glenn Duhon. Shout out to you, coach. He would say, you know, Campbell, you're just a goddamn clubhouse lawyer. Shut up. <laughs> That's what he said. And he was right. But people like us, bro, we question the authorities. And you're not allowed to question the authorities, bro. Shut up and be another order-taking rule follower like everybody else. Right? Yeah. Like it would be – it feels like it. Um, And certainly if you do something new and you be a pioneer, you certainly have to have a lot of – for times you have a lot of arrows in your back for sure. And it took me quite a while, let's say 10 years to finally get accepted. And so that my friends, at least the young and wild dentists realize, oh, wow, what he's telling is not really just another religion. It's really just the next <laughs> thing. Yeah, at the beginning was like in my residency. In my, yeah, in my residency, my, my boss who was still placing amalgam fillings, he was a, he's a great surgeon and I really appreciate what he taught me, but he did the melting fillings. I've told him, no, I can't do it. It's ugly, nasty. And I understand it's toxic. And he's like, okay, you do your thing. You, you're an evangelist. I'm Catholic. That's how he saw it. That's so exactly I right. Bro. Everything. And it's not a religion. Actually, what I'm trying to do is like, just incorporate all the teachings and make it the next level. So biological dentistry, the way I see it is just the overlap of high-tech dentistry 
with functional medicine and health optimization with the goal being optimal health for my patients. And you know, by itself, like health is usually absence of disease, but I'm not interested in subpar health. I'm interested in how to get to like top level health physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually on all levels. And obviously if your mouth is like really super toxic and unhealthy, the rest of your body is too. Exactly so right. Like, well, yeah. look, I mean, I remember when you and I were together and you were looking in my mouth and you were like, bro, you're already advanced and I can make you a lot more advanced. And I, I told you the truth. I'm like, bro, I, how am I going to like right now come out of my life with all the creativity and all the content that I create and the life that I do and go over to Germany to see you for you to, you know, take everything out. Cause I know that I desperately would, would benefit from you removing everything in my mouth and I could obviously afford it, but it was like one of these things where I was like, dude, how am I going to do that in my life? Right? Like I'm 52 you know, and I know you have an answer for it and I'll let you tell it, you know, so that we can get more people to do this. But like, I was just like, fuck man, I don't want you to like go into my mouth and remove all these toxic fillings and amalgam fillings. And I still have even some mercury. You saw it. I still have mercury in my mouth. And, and, and so for me, like my rationalization was like, well, you know what? I'm conscious and I have it in my mouth. So, I mean, how much more conscious are you going to make me, right? I mean, for half the fucking world, or maybe it's 80% of the world that are sheep, they probably all need to do this because they it's probably one of the leading reasons why people are not conscious, bro. Yes, definitely. You know that you already said it, that mercury leaches out of these fillings. Yes. It's the mercury, but mercury attaches itself to various enzymes and actually to the pituitary gland, and you know how much the pituitary gland controls. Everything. And obviously, you get low, you get an antenna in this loaded world. So basically, um, if somebody would use um, electromagnetic waves and fields against you, has if you're more electric, you can become electro-hypersensitive, which a lot of people do. And uh, But I would ask the other question. This is always just like, okay, it's an investment, obviously, to do that. And never freak out, guys. It's more about being like Jay knowing about it and then find a strategy or solution, how to remove these things safely, because you don't want to go to any conventional dentist and just take out. No, a no. Well, that why don't you good. explain that? Cause you already did that to me and I know the answer, but just for the audience. And I know I told you we're going all over the place. We will get to your talking points, but because it's this okay. is what people want to know, you know, people want to be like, okay, I got five fillings in my mouth. I've got a, a root canal or a crown or whatever, you know, and I'm 48, I'm 55, blah, blah, blah. How long is this going to take me, Dom? And, you know, what am I looking at from a cost standpoint? You know, because like when you, and I, and I won't get into cost, but like, you know, for me, it was just the time commitment. It was like, I got to go to Germany and then I got to come back to Germany. And I'm like, ah, nah, nah, nah. so I'm just kind of like rejecting it because of all the things I do in my life. But why don't you just share like what, a, what an average removal complete total removal get to get you back to good to, again get toxin free in your mouth so basically what you have to see all the patients most of our patients actually fly in from all over the world and that's why we plan every case remotely so you basically send in your panoramic x-ray and i ask three questions mm -hmm. that, that you guys could ask yourself number one have you or had any metal in your mouth stand up like jay has stand up then second question have you had any or more root canal treatments? Stand up. And the number three is, did they remove your wisdom teeth? And if any of these questions will be answered by you with a yes, you know there's oral interference. Oral means there's something disrupting your nervous system, your immune system, your hormones from within because your teeth are an extension of your brain. So what we do is we always plan the full case. It's not conventional dentistry where you look for repair of one tooth. I see the bigger picture, what has been done, and how can we repair it all in one session, so to speak. So you will be prepared, and then you fly in, and we take out all metal safely, all root canals. I replace them with ceramic implants, not titanium, and I take care of these so-called cavitations, which are chronic silent inflammations in your jawbone that are coming from these wisdom teeth that are removed. So basically, we're able to do everything in one, let's say, one health optimization week where you fly in and fly out, but you have to make the time for it like Jay hasn't right now. But it's always, the question is always more like, what does it cost you in terms of optimal health if you don't do it and if you still run around with it? And obviously, if you can compensate quite well like he does, 
it's good, but most people can't really. And uh, the problem is nowadays we're living in a society of uh, the epidemic is chronic disease. Contamination. And, yeah. Yeah. And this is the epidemic since the, since the 2000 chronic disease is like on the rise. And you should obviously do everything that you hear, like nutrition, lifestyle, peptides, whatever you can do. But what I always say, if you're still not superhuman yet, then it's time at least to look into your mouth and look for oral interference because it could be the biggest enemy to your optimal health or whatever is your goal and lurking in your mouth and you don't even know about it. That's why I have this mission to tell many out, the many out there, all health coaches, everyone out there should at least have a look in the mouth of their patient, look for metals, root canals, cavitations, oral interference, because this could really be the trigger that, that holds you back from optimal health or even from health. A lot of people are really sick and um, are suffering and fly in from everywhere and then they get healthier. This is the fulfilling part. You can combine the high level craftsman with and the aesthetic with healing people and making them more healthy. And this is fulfilling. So every dentist out there who resonates with this, this is what the next level is. People will be your patients will be more your fans yeah. flying from everywhere. And they're really thankful because you help them really and not just make them nice teeth. You do both. Maybe you're depressed, whatever it is. And it's almost, it maybe is gone and you got a nice set of teeth. That should be the focus. Not like, oh, I have a new crown or whatever. This is boring. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. Well, not the, the whole, the whole, I mean, again, the dental industry is a sham. I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, like I said, like just doing my own personal research and interviewing of dentists and literally not hearing a single one of them telling me that fluoride was dangerous was like so eye-opening for me. Cause it, I mean, I already knew from my own, you know, mission and, and, and what I do obviously in allopathic and teaching people hormonal optimization. And, and you and I are basically doing the same thing you're doing in dentistry and I'm doing it in the allopathic space and in teaching people that you don't need you know, any of these adjuvants or drug interventions, you just need to optimize your hormones. You need to change your lifestyle. You need to live inflammation free. You need to reduce body fat. I mean, you're doing the same thing for the mouth. So we're basically the same guy, but it's like, the reality is, is like nobody in today's world, bro, because technology has made people so lazy. I mean, you, you and your wife are going to be doing this, you know, your guys, your kids are so young right now, but you're going to be dealing with this soon. I mean, like I have conversations with my friends, you know, who have teenage kids and we literally sit there sometimes and we talk and we're like, our kids are brain dead, you know, like are, they don't read. They're on their device. They're on TikTok. They're on Snapchat. They're on Instagram reels, whatever it is. And it's like, yes, you can be a good parent and you can regulate this, but they're still going to be on it because the schools support it. Oh no. You know what I'm saying? So you already know. So like, so the reality is, is like technology has made people so lazy, bro that the average person, they don't want to change their lifestyle. Like you and I can tell them that like, Hey man, we can remove, you know, cavitations and amalgam and mercury fillings, or, or, you know, I can get people on therapeutic testosterone or I can get them optimized without even using therapeutic testosterone. But if they're not willing to change their lifestyle, you know, any adaptation that we could help them create or create for them won't last because they're going to go back to the same lazy, shitty habits of drinking too much alcohol, eating too much sugar, not exercising, not getting good sleep hygiene. I mean, again, onward and onward, not, you know, being bombarded by electromagnetic frequencies. So it's like, that's the hardest battle is like the hardest battle is like telling people that like, Hey man, we're only one part of the equation. Yes. You still have to live optimized and you still have to change your lifestyle just because he's going to remove, you know, all of these contaminants and toxins from your mouth. If you still treat your body like a flaming dumpster fire, who gives a shit if he does that? Because the same problems are going to rear their head again, right? Exactly. And this is why I never accept any patient who doesn't accept my challenges, which is you have to start changing your lifestyle and nutrition and everything before you even see us. Because otherwise, 
I would waste my time. I cannot totally. help you if you don't take responsibility. Totally. And this is why it's so great because people are people that fly in from all over the world, they are committed. They really change everything. And I always say everybody who makes it to me is part of the mission. If we heal ourselves, we help the many out there and can talk about it. And therefore, obviously, it's something special, but um, it's just so fulfilling. And it's basically working with your friends instead of, you know, how the conventional dentist is seen as. It's more like in Hangover, this dude is just a dentist. Nobody likes to go to the dentist usually. They have there's a fear factor to it, and this is totally different. Now we you can go there, we get IVs, hyperbaric oxygen, like everything is combined to get you to the next level, but only if you're ready for it. And like Chase says it, if you don't change your lifestyle and you're still sitting around and eating soft foods, processed foods, you will have another tooth decay, another root canal, and all these things. Because the goal should be in the future that we don't need to repair your teeth. And don't need a dentist, actually, because nature has it right. If you eat whole foods and be outside in nature and don't be on the phone all day long and chew chewy foods, you have teeth hard as stone and you have enough space for all your wisdom teeth. You will never need anything. But actually, this starts before you even get pregnant. It starts during pregnancy, breastfeeding. This will all prepare for a healthy set of teeth. So it takes a bit until this mindset is yeah, because nowadays, if I put out a video on Instagram and I say I don't floss, my colleagues will attack me and tell me. No, you I watched that to- video that you put out the other day. And by the way, you're going to love me for this. And I'm not saying this to have you blow smoke up my ass. I haven't flossed in seven years. I've been using a water pick for seven years. I yeah, why not? Floss. There's no reason to use floss. It literally, as you said in your video, it literally irritates the gum and the, uh, what is it? Um What's below the gum? Periodontia. Um, yeah. The thing People is, are irritating it. The thing is, so that everybody understands. So I'm, they call me sometimes the biggest conspiracy theorist in the whole dental world. Or lately, I was called the liver king of dentistry. Uh, I don't know. Just, just because I said that, I, that I'm specific with flossing. So if you're having a ton of dental work done, crown work, titanium implants, root canals, and your gums are bleeding all day long, you have a super unnatural mouth. So you might need to floss because it's stuck there in there and you're bleeding because of chronic inflammation. Then actually flossing helps. But if you're like me, I have nothing. I have perfect teeth. I have uh, the only thing I had is wisdom teeth removed. My gums are clean. Healthy gums do not bleed. But if you then use a floss, they might bleed because you rip them open. So this is how people are misconcepted. So yes, if you're unhealthy, if you live a sedentary lifestyle, if you eat crap foods, then maybe you need to floss and you need to clean and whatever. But in the real world, if actually everything would be healthy, and this is why they, that's why they actually called me the liver king. Well, of- I mean, I would, look, I would just say uh, I think you're more right than you're wrong, though. Even in saying that, because you're you know you're creating a, a case scenario where you need to floss. Look, I was that guy. You know, I had spacers and and braces. I mean, that's a whole other scam that you and I could talk about, right? Like, I mean, most people don't understand that. I mean, again, everything is an inversion. We've been taught that you do this, you do that, you get this done, you have your braces put on, you space, you rip out the root, I mean, the, the wisdom teeth. It's all bullshit, bro. I mean, and you've proven it, but as a guy with a lot of metal and spacing problems, Teeth that crowded again here. You can see you know, my, yeah. my lower uh, teeth crowded. Same here. Yeah. So it's like I can still get in with a water pick. I don't need a floss pick. I don't need the high-end graded floss. I can still get in with a water pick. And where I can't, I get the metal you know, thing. And I go in between that. I mean, but dude, I, I, it's funny that you say all those things because I, I, like I said, I literally just saw that video the other day. I don't know how it just somehow was on my Instagram feed and I watched it. I was like, oh, that's my boy. And so I watch it and I'm like, that's fucking awesome. That's like exactly what I, because, um, and by the way, I, the, my dentist, I, we, I saw a guy here a month and a half ago, amazing guy here, by the way, you know, and he didn't say anything to me about not flossing. He asked me, he was like, you, you're using a, a, a irrigation, uh, technology right that's what he said to me and i was like yeah i use a water pick and he's like okay you're doing a pretty good job you have a little bit of um you know what do you call it uh plaque or not plaque calculus he said you have a little bit of calculus right here but again that's i've always been 
the area for me because when I had my braces, remember I got cement, you know, that's another thing. They put cement all over your fucking teeth. <laughs> and that cement, you know, solidifies and calcifies and gets all that, you know, with the digestive enzymes and the salivary enzymes and all that. And it makes a grit. And so I always had like a gritty aspect right in there that, of course, when they took off my braces, bro, when I was in my like early 20s or what it was, the late teens or whatever, um, it stayed there. And then, so of course, calculus and tartar and plaque would build up on that. And I never even knew any of that until finally, like in my late thirties, a, a dentist was like, you realize that you could just have that sanded off. <laughs> and, I, and, I'm, and I'm like, literally, I didn't realize that. And you know what? You're the first person that ever told me that. So, I mean, dude, again, the dental profession, I hate saying this, but it's just the same as the allopathic medical profession. They're a bunch of rule following order takers. They're not critical thinkers. They, they, they learn it the way that you learned it and none of them question it and they don't do anything about it. And so you are the conspiracy theorist of dentists because you're like the guy saying, Hey, there's a better way. Yes. And if you start this like 10 years ago, it was really, I didn't even, 10 years ago was only early. This was like late twenties, early thirties. So now I'm 40 and years they, old. They thought you were insane. Probably. No, really, I didn't even think about it. I was just writing an article because I researched root canals. <laughs> I really, and then I was, uh, this article, actually, um, I tried to get this printed in any of the dental magazines. And they all, they were quite nice. And it's like, good research, but we cannot print it because it will end up in, in extractions. And I'm like, okay, what can I do? Then, I, then the, the biggest German online dental college or whatever it was, like an online page, they actually, they actually, um, put it out there online, this, this article. And it was the most read article within 24 uh, hours that they had before. So they then printed it in their journal, which was the the tribune for the endodontologists. The endodontologists are the dentists that only- And they all started it. thinking about how could we attack this guy? Yes. And then I was giving speeches and I was always attacked from the dentist, but emotionally attacked, like really bad. Of course. And, I, and then at one point when I wrote my book, It's All in Your Mouth, in Germany, I, back then, I didn't have any contact with press yet. So yeah, it was my yeah, yeah. first press interview for the local town. And I'm like, like I am, like nothing, thinking nothing. And I just, I just knew from the five years before, they can't criticize then my dental colleagues because I already knew they will be attacking me. So I, I only said at the end, please only inform, don't criticize. And, right. I'm, and I'm like trusting them. Don't even look at this newspaper. I'm in, on vacation in, in, in Dubai when this hits this newspaper and I'm just getting from my friend, he's just sending me this. And the title was Nishwitz, Nishwitz hit a nerve, which is nice title because Ruth yeah. hit a nerve. But the subtitle was basically saying Nishwitz is criticizing all his dental colleagues, including the whole university. Of course. And I'm like, and I'm like, uh -oh. Uh oh shit. And then the shit storm hit hard. <laughs> and like I had, Every single day, letters. Nobody ever came to me in person. No one ever in person. And because never, they can't, dude. No, because your shit was evidence based, and they knew they had no no land leg to stand on. But again, bro, rule following order takers. You are dominionizing them, even though you didn't do it intentionally. In their yeah. mind, you're making them look bad because they're following the rules and and taking the orders, and you're the guy that's saying no. You need to question I, all that. And I just thought I'm going to help them. And no, never, never, never. It's the same as me, dude. When I put the book out, people went after me. You're not a doctor. <laughs> you don't have a right to say any of this. I'm like, bro, I mean, do you have any idea like how many doctors who never even used testosterone were the criticizers? It's still yeah. the same way today. Like, I, you know, people are literally working with physicians who have never used testosterone. It's like, are you brain dead? Like, why would you work with a doctor who doesn't even know anything about the usage of the product? It's the, right? same, it's the same with dentistry here. Yes. If you talk to someone who, who, whose profession is root canal treatments, why would he remove a root canal? Or is he, most dentists have never done a ceramic implant. I have placed more than 5,000, 80% being immediate. So it's really, it's really, I'm doing future of dentistry for 10 years, which is for most people still... What? He's doing a ceramic implant. First of all, it's not possible they break. Second, 
immediate implant is not even possible with the titanium implant. So you see and that still, but now luckily all the big companies bring out a ceramic implant because it's just white and more aesthetic, which helps. Yeah. But it's not, not marketed as more um, biocompatible, which it is. The ceramic implant is a healing device. It's totally neutral. But 99% of all dentists still use a classic titanium. So imagine this. 40 years ago, 40 years ago, imagine this one 40 years ago wasn't existing. Imagine how much development is there within the last 10 years. 40 years ago, a titanium screw looked the same as now a titanium screw. No, no advancement. This is Zero innovation, bro. Zero. And now that's why ceramic implant is a bit better of information. But really, 10 years ago, another colleague would have spit in your face if you said you use a ceramic implant. It's like, now it's accepted. Now, luckily, biological dentistry gets accepted. Now, I told you before, is the problem I'm facing right now is that people now hop on the bandwagon. They're not trained by myself, but they say, I'm a biological dentist. I'm trained they listen to YouTube. Yeah, but then they have a very good marketing on their website and then patients don't understand the difference. So now I have to invent a new quality standard. That's what I'm, what the next Bro, you know, it's funny. Be. I just, it just triggered me because I was thinking of what, because I've had to deal with the same thing. Oh, man. Uh, the exact same thing. They're like, oh, no, no, you don't understand. We're, we follow Jay Campbell's protocols. <laughs> I, I only have my course since 2021, December. Oh, well, we know we read his books. <laughs> That's what they're going to do with you. That's what, when you call them out on the carpet, they'll eventually be like, oh, well, no, 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 no. You just misunderstand. Like we read his book and we use his same procedures and protocols. That's what they're going to say. I, I literally guarantee every one of them because that's what they always do too. It's the same thing, bro. But remember, uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Yeah, I know, I know. And I'm really happy, but still, you know, I want to make this the next level. Therefore, I have to be careful that it's not going to be backfire because I'm it, luckily because I'm so good with the ceramic implants that normal regular dentists follow me too because it's very, very high skilled stuff. This was the only way possible that dental community would even listen to me when I was talking about nutrition, bringing in vitamin D3, vitamin K2, magnesium, amino acids. Because I, I taught about the, the systemic bone healing, which yeah. is basically how to get a body anabolic because otherwise you catch your patient in hibernation mode, like like in zombie mode, how can they really heal? And luckily this ca caught on and now I'm, I'm at this point where it's finally like luckily opening up. Still it's in, it's in baby shoes. I don't know if you can say that, but yeah. more and more young and wild dentists are coming that are more open-minded. I'm more like me and you. Luckily, yeah. luckily. Yeah. No, and that's, you're in the perfect place because you're going to be the mentor, you know, the senior wisdom got, giver to them. It's the same, we do, we're in the exact same space. I mean, I, when I was at the A4M medical conference in December in Vegas, you know, the biggest, uh, you know, anti-aging longevity conference in the world, I had a bunch of young doctors like run up to me and like want to take pictures with me. I mean, I, you know, yeah. I felt like a celebrity it was like, Oh my God, Jay Campbell, can we take a picture with you? You know? And it's like, the key is the same. It's the same thing with you. It's like the younger crowd recognizes that there is a better way to do things. And the old stodgy, you know, older crowd brainwashed by the system, let's just call it the system or the old ways. They're not going to, they're not going to change, bro. Like you and I can tell them till we're blue in the face, but they only <laughs> learned it a certain way. And unless they're really, you know, visionary and truly like, you know, inward reflecting and inward leaning, they're not going to change, bro. We could tell them whatever and show them all the evidence and the peer review and, you know, our successes and, you know, the thousands of people that you, we've helped. It's not going to matter. It's the younger people. The people that learn it the correct way from the beginning. And that's the coolest part is that, you know, we, bro, our best days are ahead of us. They really, really are. I mean, it yeah. sounds crazy because I'm 50 and you're 40, right? But like the reality is, is like our better days are ahead of us as more and more people wake up and become aware of this. If you're, if you're okay with that, I do want you to share those, some of the like talking point number four, we've covered all the other ones really, but like, what is the high tech functional cutting edge health optimization that you employ in addition to all the stuff that we've already talked about. Like if you can break it down a little bit and get a little bit granular. Yeah. So basically everything you would do too. So we are working with a lot of um, different practitioners, 
But in the clinic, we use when you when it comes to cutting edge technologies, we will use various different intravenous nutrients. And this is already for 10 years. And because this is my nerdy part that I'm very good with formulating IVs and, and supplements and all these things. We have even laser in your vein, which is um, low level laser therapy. So photo biomodulation, but in, in your veins to warp speed your healing, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. We we'll even have an infrared sauna. I would love to give peptides and everything, but I'm not allowed to, but I work with coaches who are there. Not yet, right. Yeah. Not yet, but I know because of guys like you, we will be at one point. And I actually read your book, uh, which is, again, amazing. I actually also, before I even knew you, um, read your testosterone optimization, yep. everything, Jay. Yep. Everything. Yep. So I think we all, all the right people, I like our wolf pack finds each other. Anyways, exactly. Like we're here. I always say the health Avengers so the nitty gritty is just everything you learn from health optimization, we would apply and use. And whenever there's something new, I would look into it. If it's NAD, IV, or if it's methylene blue in your vein, combine methylene blue with low level laser therapy in your vein. Amazing. Hyperbaric and healing of your bone. There's so much research out there. No one knows about it. Obviously, I use it. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user? Maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. Even in Mexico, they're doing hyperbaric. So my wife, you know, she had from before her and I were together, but and you haven't met Monica yet. You will. But uh, she had a breast augmentation after her last baby, right? Because her boobs caved in, right? A lot of women have that. And so she had boobs put in. And, you know, over time, she had capsicular contractions. And so we saw an amazing surgeon down here who's now become a very close personal friend of mine. He's Italian, world class. Charges like... I mean, he's like a teaching uh, surgeon down here in Mexico. And bro, he's like one fifth the cost of the States. And he's better than anybody in Newport Beach. I mean, he's unreal. But like she had new ones uh, done. And and um, just recently, it's been like five weeks now. And she's completely healed. And of course, we use peptides. We used a, a transdermal peptide on the incisions. It he healed her faster than anything he's ever seen. And then she also used hyperbaric for five days in a row. And yeah. the hyperbaric, pe you're right. People do not know about this stuff, bro. It accelerated her healing, the wound closing and the incision uh, sealing, uh, in addition to just feeling better, right? Like actually getting back up on your feet, um, having the, 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 um, the, the implants take and all that stuff. I mean, it's mind blowing how little uh, orthodox medicine truly does know about everything that's out there right now. Yeah, but if you like us and your bodybuilding training and nutrition and something, you're doing this for 20 years, I'm doing this like my half my life. You understand it makes no sense. Why would you, like as a doctor or surgeon, just treat someone from the street who is obviously not optimized? No exactly. nutrition, lack of nutrients. Exactly. The only thing, the only thing that's constant is okay, this is how we perform the surgery. And this is maybe what medication you should be on. Right. What about maybe he, he has a vitamin D3 level of below 30 or below 60. There's no bone healing at all. How should an implant osteointegrate? Why would you do anything for them? Then you end up doing something bad. So this is why systemic healing is actually what we all do. And this is everybody should be on a protocol like with peptides and optimized, which means Literally, you could be in a surgery every single day if something happens and you would just heal and warp speed. This is how everybody should be treating their life, like being ideally, yeah, because it, you could fall and hurt your elbow and you need to warp speed, heal it. So I broke my elbow skateboarding two years ago. And the doctor told me, oh, man, you probably need a surgery and it will take three months until you lift the weight again. And I'm like, no, wait a second. I invented the bone healing protocol. I'll show you. Obviously, I used peptides and everything in my bone healing protocol. And within four weeks, no surgery, first of all, no surgery. After 10 days, he said, okay, you don't need surgery. And within four weeks, I was back to training. And after six weeks, same weights than before. He didn't even hear about it, even though there's research showing you, for example, about vitamin D3, framing him osteoporosis study. No, no, it's about protein. Just protein is very important in my teachings. So if you break your, uh, your, what is it, your femur and 
you only eat below one gram per kilogram, which is half gram per pound probably per, of protein, instead of w one gram per kilogram, it could be that you have 30 days longer in the hospital just because you have a little bit too less protein. Therefore, we double up and we do two grams per kilogram, which is one gram per pound. At least, I, I believe that should be normal for everybody everywhere, but at least around the surgery for the next four to five, six um, months. Imagine how many doctors actually make uh, give that out, though, as a recommendation. And it's like you said, again, because of your background in fitness and training with weights and all this stuff and all of the stuff that you and I just you know forget because we, it's so commonplace to us, medicine doesn't do that. I mean, they just don't, bro. I mean, it's literally mind blowing. I mean, you know, I just did a podcast this morning, a live stream with Richard Cooper, entrepreneur in cars. He's got millions of people to follow him. And we were talking about peptides and I've been getting a lot of, you know, very blessed being interviewed about peptides. And we talked about like the GLP-1 agonists, which you and I haven't even talked about yet, but I know you know about them and they're amazing, right? But you got all these idiots attacking them because obese comorbid people are using them prescribed by doctors who then just do exactly as you just said, don't give them instructions on how to lose body fat correctly. And they take them and they stop eating and they do lose muscle and they do oh, lose, they crash thyroid and, and destroy their metabolism. And then they come off the drugs and they rebound the weight gain because again, it's simple stuff, but dude, these people don't know. And then the, you know, the mainstream guru talking heads like Peter Atia. And other people go out there and smash these things and say they lose muscle and they're horrible and you should avoid them. So it's just like one giant circle jerk, bro, of people not being informed correctly yes. on what to do. And you you hit it best. I mean, I said this. I made a video on this the other day, and that's why he was asking me about this. And I said, look, the average doctor that prescribes drugs like GLP-1 agonist for weight loss knows nothing about losing body fat. They don't know about protein per grams a pound, like you just said. They don't know about weight training and cardiovascular training. They literally just tell people, stop, you know, eat more fruit. I mean, it's insane the shit that they give them for advice. But, you know, this is the m biggest problem. What do you think? How much did I learn in medical school about nutrition? Zero. Yeah, literally zero. <laughs> A one on one class. Maybe it's 30 minutes, but then only how to count these bread units for diabetics, which is the total bullshit. So I train dentists and naturopath doctors. And the funny thing is, I started the bone eating protocol with high dose of vitamin D3, which was 20,000 IU, which was then like everybody was like, oh, is this dude crazy? That's but too I much, bro. I and take 20,000. I like K2 magnesium. But I realized I was doing this on my foundation of having a healthy nutrition. Yes. So I implemented the thinking in nutrients, the food design concept and getting this into the minds of doctors and dentists, you have to really make it so simple. I really literally give them this, these things like my patients for two weeks, I basically make them into bodybuilders. After you have to. You I have tell to. them, okay, we are now you get your driver's license. You become the architect of your body. Therefore, I install a speedometer, which is basically a macronutrient domina the, um, thermometer. Yep. So I tell them, okay, I want you to eat two grams per kilogram, one gram per pound yep. of ideal body weight protein. Here's right. how you calculate it. They get a WhatsApp video for me or they do my online course. And then within two weeks, I, I tell them, okay, then you should be able to eyeball it. But for the next three months until I see you again, you need to hit these numbers because then you will have the results. And it's right. not about the ceramic implant being osteoindrated but they will be way more healthier. They will also That's tell right. you, oh, by the way, right. I lost 10 kilograms. I lost 15 pounds. <laughs> it's like literally yesterday I had a patient from California and she just started four weeks prior with, with my food design, which basically means you stop eating the stuff that costs you health, which is gluten, right. dairy, all the stuff, right. you know, processed foods, refined cereal. <laughs> yes, cereal. And eat and think in nutrients. So basically eat whole foods, enough protein. Only four weeks. She's like coming in it's like, it's impossible. I cannot understand, but I lost six kilograms within a month. Is that, can you imagine? I'm like, yes, I can also imagine losing 15 kilograms within a month, but yes, it's amazing. But they do it with eating more because they get rid of the inflammation. They get rid of, they, they control the blood sugar. All these things are implemented in the nutritional design. And I think this is foundational work. That's why my online course is talking about what can you do? What is the 80% everybody could do straight away? It's always nutrition, Lifestyle changes, 
thinking nutrients from macro to micro and also learning about the oral interference because at one point, probably even Che will come out and make this time to saw out his mouth because he will have just more energy and lives another 10 years longer <laughs> and being more young. No if I had any more energy, man, I would never sleep. Uh, but no, I got you. I will. I, there's no question. There's no question well, that I will. What happens for you is that it's getting more balanced then. Well, the, what I was like, I was telling you is like, bro, if I took all the metal out of my mouth, I wouldn't stay physical. I would just become an energy being and just float around. All over, you know? <laughs> that no, maybe it's true. It, it, now. It, it, is, it is true about what you just said to go back to that. Like, and you're one of the only doctors and bro, I've interviewed literally thousands of people, right? Like I'm on I six, I'm on 600, I think 22 shows, you know, cause it started in 2015 when it was the TOT revolution podcast. And then it became the Jay Campbell podcast. Uh, in 2020, it actually became the Jay Campbell podcast in November of 2019. Right. So I'm, I've got a lot of episodes. I've never had a doctor. You're the first one. I'm the first one. Say, say what you just said about teaching people basically how to live like a quote unquote fitness athlete or a bodybuilder to become yeah. healthy. Nobody really thinks along those lines. And again, that's why you're a visionary. That's why you're here. But it's true. I mean, if we could teach, I mean, it's so funny. We're so on the same wavelength. Like you said, you know, um, we kind of all attract each other now, children of the light, whatever we are, wolf pack. But th the reality is, is like, they don't understand even how to teach their patients how to become fit, right? Because they don't understand insulin controlled living. I mean, I mean, again, like you said, they know nothing about nutrition. A an average diabetic doctor, I know they call them diabeticians, depending on where you are in the world. But literally, this is the statement they say. Imagine this, bro. They say this to their patients. We're going to manage your type 2 diabetes. What the fuck is that? You're going to manage it. You mean, so wait a minute. So you're saying you're going to not change their lifestyle, but no. you're going to prescribe them drugs and you're going to manage it. So it's like, I always say this to people, think about this. So you're going to manage it until what their fucking leg falls off. They lose an eye from glaucoma. They get gout in their right knee and it just gets amputated. I mean, bro, this is how people all across the world have been advised and consulted with by quote unquote diabetic or weight loss doctors, whatever you want to call them all over the world. I have literally consulted with hundreds of people in the last five years from all sorts of walks of life, from India, from Pakistan, from Australia, from everywhere, EU, even South Africa. And that's what they say to me. And I literally look at them and I'm like, what in the fuck? You have been managing your diabetes. Do you yeah. understand that if you would have changed your diet, started building muscle, maybe looked into therapeutic testosterone or therapeutic peptides or therapeutic growth hormone, you wouldn't even be talking to me right now. But dude, that's what they learned. This is what these doctors tell them. They don't have a single clue. And this is, this is incredible. So because all the information is there. And this is why we have to get that mission so big because literally, if you know what to do, I would say you can reverse it within three months, everything. Literally. You can hold gut. 90 and days. Reversing 90 so days, fast. Huh? 90 days, 90 days, 90 days, yeah, but that's change your whole so. life in 90 days. Yeah. I would say 90 days. If you, it's fucking doable. It's easy. Yeah. Uh, but e easy only if you really taking responsible for your body you, guys out there, you have to understand you only have a body. You're not your body. You have that body. And if you let, let it be destroyed, it's gone. Yeah. That's why everybody is chronically sick and, you're suffering out there, but there are solutions. And even though it sounds weird that it's sometimes so easy than just changing your lifestyle, consistency is key here. You have to make it a habit. You know, know what to eat, metabolic, become metabolically flexible, know the tools in the toolbox from keto to carnivore, from intermittent fasting, 16, 8, 18, 6, whatever, to even plant-based dieting, or even what I do, like level three of my food design is I combine, I look at your body composition and your HRV, where it is right now from a medical point of view. And then I can tell you if you should eat more like carbohydrates, like let's say more fast acting carbohydrates, or if you should go more on the inside and eat more carnivore. It's totally depending also on your uh, autonomic nervous system. If you're more, more sympathetic dominant, you probably need a little bit more carbs to calm you down. And the opposite, if you are a bit more parasympathetic dominant, 
you probably need a little bit less because you gain easier. And you need a little bit more tyrosine and a little bit more adrenaline from more meaty foods, like more carnivore. I personally, for example, I have to kind of eat like a regular bodybuilder. That means quite low fat, lots of protein and easy, easy carbs and stuff. You have seen my, 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 my mesomorph type. I, I'm not a, I can eat keto, whatever, everything works. But um, for the long-term overall health, it will kill also a bit of your testosterone. It will also change insulin. So I'm a fan of using nutrition strategically. So there's a time for keto, but I'm not a fan, for example, for doing keto forever for most people. From well, a, I, well, medical- hold on. Let's talk about that for a second because it's very important. And yeah. you know this about me. I wrote a book in early 90s. I mean, I wasn't an author, but I was involved in the research with Lyle McDonald in the first book on a ketogenic diet, a theory and practice. I was this crash test dummy for three years. I was in ketosis or in cyclical ketogenic dieting. So modified ketosis. Uh, it's very true. And I tell people this all the time. You're right. Ketosis cannot be supported long-term. It retards insulin metabolism. There is no human being on the planet that can stay in ketosis forever without severe problems with insulin metabolism. And as you know, if you fuck up your insulin metabolism, you are going to be a zombie when you return to normal carb-based eating, which is almost inevitable for every human being because we want to enjoy our time on planet Earth. We can't just eat meat and, I mean, uh, you know, protein and fat forever. You do your body, the brain does crave, you know, gl- uh, glucose. So it's like, at some point you're going to have to eat carbohydrates, but dude, I'm telling you, man, I was, when I came out of that for four months, I was a zombie. I literally could not process carbohydrates. I would literally like have, uh, b- bouts of narcolepsy. <laughs> you, you, I mean, you literally cannot ever stay in a ketotic diet. Now, Obviously, there's great genius people out there that talk about carnivore and talk about ketosis and talk about if it fits your macros and fasting and all that stuff. And as you know, I've written two books on fasting and another one's coming soon, um, which you'll want to have 30 days of shreds, which I'll send to you before in advance. But like the reality is you just said it. You have to be metabolically flexible. You have to eat relative to your energetic demand. Some people can get by... Uh, on a uh, very low carb diet all the time. Yeah. People like you and I that train with weights can't. You have to refill your muscle glycogen stores. People that are out there saying, oh, that's not true, Jay. Gluconeogenesis, I can eat protein and get carbohydrates. That's bullshit. You cannot refill your muscle glycogen stores adequately without eating carbohydrates. So again, I'm not, I'm not attacking people, bro, who say that you can have a ketosis diet and be a bodybuilder. Yes. But if you do that, you have to plan your reglycogenation periods. There has to be planned refeeds of carbohydrates. Now, again, eat clean carbohydrates, right? But as you know, bro, people want to enjoy life. You said it best. We are not our bodies. We have a body, but we are not our body. So it's like if you're going to be here and you're going to live in the now and you're going to enjoy the ride, you're going to have moments where you want to eat and indulge. And that's fine. Just yes. understand that it's moderation, okay? But, dude, these people that get so caught up in the debate of carnivore versus keto, like Sean, what's his name? The nut job doctor that just screams at people, carnivore or bust, you know? And it's like, dude, I mean, that guy did all his lab markers. I don't know if you ever saw that. And he's, like, dying. He was a type 2 diabetic. I mean, but, but the reality is, is, like, don't go too extreme. You said it best. Be metabolically flexible. Change and adapt when necessary. Yes. And therefore, you need to know when to time what what is the right toolbox. I don't say that a quick keto phase is is maybe even very good for you. If you like insulin resistant right now, it might be the best strategy or going paleo or whatever. It just needs to know. And this is what Jay said best. When it becomes a religion or becomes dogmatic, that's the problem. Because actually at the end, you should be an intuitive being and should be able to know what you need. But it's obviously gone because of all the man-made foods, this intuition. That's why we have to train, tra- retrain it. Because, for example, I did the same as you, like went on keto or low carb for too long. And therefore, this also actually wrecks your thyroid. You know, you need the carbs for your thyroid and everything. So rebuilding all these things takes a little bit longer. And um, you can... 
totally individualize everything. But you have to get out of your head at one point and understand how your body really works. And therefore, it could be that you even don't need a lot of protein because your microbiome is very great in producing protein from carbs. Actually, it's easier than the other way around. Um, always have your microbiome in, in, um, in your head too when you do something. For example, I have a good friend. He's a researcher here in the clinic in, in Tübingen University. And he researches the microbiome. What I didn't know is I thought... The microbiome changes, obviously, with substrate within, let's say, three days. He says it's within 12 hours. You stop eating carbs within 12 hours, the ones that eat fats dominate and the others die. So a breastfed baby, for example, has a total different oral microbiome and gut microbiome than a bottle formula fed baby. And a, a carnivore dude or carnivore woman has a total different microbiome than a plant-based eater. So it's all about the symbiotic effects because you are only 10% actually human. The rest is microbiome. So have that microbiome in your mind too. It's not all about just macronutrients. It's more about the information you give through diet and nutrition. Beautiful. All right, man. Well, this has been an amazing podcast. Um, you didn't, we didn't talk about oral health and the killer to sexual hormones. Did you want to kind of talk about that? I mean, again, it's understood you know, I mean, as you know, 80% of men in the world have a testosterone deficiency nowadays. You know, we obviously liken it to the contamination of the environment from plastics and from the shit they spray and obviously the pesticides and the glyphosate and the atrazine and all this stuff. But it's the, the contamination that you talk about from the things that you remove. That's also killing sexual hormones as well, correct? It's actually it's super simple. Your mouth is kind of like the entrance to your whole body and teeth and gums and whatever teeth are an extension of your brain like your eyes whatever you do in your mouth if it's metals root canals or whatever will stress your immune system will stress with cytokines overproduction chronic inflammation but also with toxins which go in your liver if you now understand the whole health matrix cortisol pregnenolone steel all these things and obviously any chronic stressor in your body will deplete your sex ho sexual hormones over time so it's different so it's it's cytokines, but also obviously chronic stress, which you know better than me, probably how pregnenolone still works, where, how your testosterone will decline. So yes, it's really important. If you have optimized everything the way how um, Jay would do it or I would do it, but you're still not superhuman, then maybe check your mouth. Are there any metals? Are there any root canals? Did you get your wisdom teeth removed and have so-called cavitations, Nico, FDOJ? Then those might be the splinter you need to pull to get to the next level of optimal health. And then maybe your testosterone goes up or whatever we're talking about right now. Beautiful, man. All right. Well, listen, brother, if people want to work with you, podcast with you, connect with you, uh, obviously work with you from a standpoint of having all the shit removed from their mouth, what is the best way they can do that? Actually, the easiest is just to go on my Instagram. It's at Dr. Dom one. And then just see the tab bio there. There's links to everything. And it's the link in the bio or just go to my website, the clinic website, but you will find it on the tap bio. And probably I'm quite sure that Jay has it in the show notes. Yeah. It'll all be, it'll all be in the show notes. I just usually ask if you want to give like out a URL specific at the end that I can just throw up there, but yeah, everything will be in the show notes, man. Amazing, bro. Appreciate you. That was an epic, epic show. So guys and gals that watch the Jay Campbell podcast, as always support the amazing people that come on, go to his Instagram. It's Dr. Dome. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.